Majjhimanikaya, Sutta number 120, Sankha Rupapatti Sutta, Rebirth by Aspiration. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jeta's Grove, Anathapindika's Park. There he addressed the bhikkhus thus, Bhikkhus? Venerable Sir, they replied. The Blessed One said this, Bhikkhus, I shall teach you rebirth in accordance with one's aspiration. Listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, Venerable Sir, the Bhikkhus replied. The Blessed One said this, Here, Bhikkhus, a Bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of well-to-do nobles. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of well-to-do Brahmins. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of well-to-do householders. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of the heaven of the four great kings are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, O oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of the heaven of the four great kings. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of the heaven of the thirty-three are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of the thirty-three. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears about the Yama gods, them being long-lived, beautiful, and enjoying great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the Yama gods. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. 
These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears about the gods of the Tusita heaven, and how they are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoying great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death I might reappear in the company of the gods of Tusita heaven. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears about the gods who delight in creating, and how they are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods who delight in creating. He fixes his mind on that establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This, because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears about the gods who wield power over others' creations and how they are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods who wield power over others' creations. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the Brahma of a thousand is long-lived, beautiful, and enjoys great happiness. Now, the Brahma of a thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of a thousand worlds and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. Just as a man with good sight might take a gallnut in his hand and review it, so the Brahma of a thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of a thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. The Bhikkhu thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the Brahma of a thousand. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the Brahma of two thousand is long-lived, beautiful, and enjoys great happiness. Now, the Brahma of two thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of two thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. Just as a man with good sight might take two gallnuts in his hand and review it, so the Brahma of two thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of two thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. The bhikkhu thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death 
I might reappear in the company of the Brahma of two thousand. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the Brahma of three thousand is long-lived, beautiful, and enjoys great happiness. Now the Brahma of three thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of three thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. Just as a man with good sight might take three gall nuts in his hand and review it, so the Brahma of three thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of three thousand worlds and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. The bhikkhu thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of the Brahma of three thousand. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the Brahma of four thousand is long-lived, beautiful, and enjoys great happiness. Now the Brahma of four thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of four thousand worlds and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. Just as a man with good sight might take four gall nuts in his hand and review it, so the Brahma of four thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of four thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. The bhikkhu thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of the Brahma of four thousand. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the Brahma of five thousand is long-lived, beautiful, and enjoys great happiness. Now the Brahma of five thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of five thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. Just as a man with good sight might take five gall nuts in his hand and review them, so the Brahma of five thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of five thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. The bhikkhu thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of the Brahma of five thousand. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way, that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the Brahma of ten thousand is long-lived, beautiful, and enjoys great happiness. Now the Brahma of ten thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of ten thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. 
just as a fine beryl gem of purest water, eight-faceted, well cut, lying on red brocade, glows, radiates, and shines, so the Brahma of ten thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of ten thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. The bhikkhu thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the Brahma of ten thousand. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This, because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the Brahma of a hundred thousand is long-lived, beautiful, and enjoys great happiness. And now the Brahma of a hundred thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of a hundred thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there just as an ornament of finest gold, very skillfully wrought in the furnace by a clever goldsmith, lying on red brocade, glows, radiates, and shines. So the Brahma of a hundred thousand abides intent on pervading a world system of a hundred thousand worlds, and he abides intent on pervading the beings that have reappeared there. The bhikkhu thinks, O oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death I might reappear in the company of the Brahma of a hundred thousand. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of radiance are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of radiance. He fixes his mind on that establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of limited radiance are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of limited radiance. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of immeasurable radiance are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of immeasurable radiance. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. 
he hears that the gods of streaming radiance are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of streaming radiance. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of glory are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of glory. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of limited glory are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of limited glory. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of immeasurable glory are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of immeasurable glory. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of refulgent glory are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of refulgent glory. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way, that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of great fruit are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death I might reappear in the company of the gods of great fruit. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the aviha gods are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death I might reappear in the company of the aviha gods. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. 
These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears, The Atapa gods are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the Atapa gods. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the Sudassa gods are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the Sudassa gods. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the Sudassi gods are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the Sudassi gods. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the Akanitta gods are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body, after death, I might reappear in the company of the Akanitta gods. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of the base of infinite space are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of infinite space. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This, because is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of the base of infinite consciousness are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of infinite consciousness. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of the base of nothingness 
are long-lived, beautiful, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of the base of nothingness. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He hears that the gods of the base of neither perception nor non-perception are long-lived, long-enduring, and enjoy great happiness. He thinks, Oh, that on the dissolution of the body after death, I might reappear in the company of the gods of the base of neither perception nor non-perception. He fixes his mind on that, establishes it, develops it. These aspirations and this abiding of his, thus developed and cultivated, lead to his rebirth there. This bhikkhus is the path, the way that leads to rebirth there. Again, a bhikkhu possesses faith, virtue, learning, generosity, and wisdom. He thinks, Oh, that by realizing for myself with direct knowledge, I might here and now enter upon and abide in the deliverance of mind and deliverance by wisdom that are taintless with the destruction of the contaminants. And by realizing for himself with direct knowledge, he here and now enters upon and abides in the deliverance of mind and deliverance by wisdom that are taintless with the destruction of the contaminants. Bhikkhus, this bhikkhu no more reappears or is reborn anywhere at all. That is what the Blessed One said. The bhikkhus were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words.